It's all China's fault. <laughs> Gosh, Rich, no. No. There's much more. That's that, what everybody there's much more into like, this. No, you're wrong. No, it's a marketer's fault. It, I know really I don't like to pick on my friends, but it is a marketer's fault. It's all your fault, BJ. Exactly. I'm um, BJ Flagg, and this is Rich G. I'm my Rich partner. G. <laughs> <laughs> and this is episode 217, How to Overcome Supply Chain Issues. Yeah, this is a big one that is in the news a lot. And you hear a lot of uh, suppliers and people and companies and stores and doctor's offices complaining about the supply chain and why it's not yes. their fault. And we want you to be a very wise consumer. That's yeah. basically our our takeaway today is, wait a minute, let's unpack this a little yeah, and let's start, start to see where this is all happening. Yeah, start looking at like, which, why is this happening? Everybody just immediately blames another country, someone else, it's someone else's fault. Right, right. And, and really what you need to do is kind of look at, it, just unpack the this whole thing and realize that this was something that was probably going to happen whether or not we had a pandemic or not. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to break it down first by saying, how did we get here? Where and when did this whole thing kind of start? Well, some of it is material scarcity. It's literally all that tiny little stuff that actually affects the bigger things. Yeah. Like for instance, uh, you know, a transistor that's got to go into this type of car, you know, so We've never really had that before where it's like the little tiny parts. So it's something to think about. Yeah, it's like the foam in uh, a chair. The the wood's there, the fabric's there, the workers there think they need foam. And that's yeah. because of the problem. The, another area is increasing freight prices. Uh, the scarcity leads to an increase in pricing. Because yeah. it's it's hard for them to get drivers and stuff, so the freight prices go up, so they push the price the cost down to the consumer. Exactly. Or think about like the difficult um, demand forecasting yeah. in a pandemic. It's increasingly horrible to think of that. Um, you know, actual demand forecasting very very hard to do. So a lot of businesses are struggling with this component. Yeah. And there's, of course, we've read about it, port congestion. Most ports are at capacity. Uh, They normally, what people didn't realize is most ports worked eight hours a day, five days a week. And now over the last month or two, uh, the government's been asking for 24-7 to get the clogging of the ports uh, relieved. And um, not for nothing, but the ports have unions. So the government asking is one thing and then implementation is another one. All of those things have to work and coordinate together. So all of a sudden you can have a request, but it's a lot of different things that uh, people that it has to go through before you actually unravel what's going on with the court, uh, the port congestion. Yeah. Um, And then there's changing consumer attitudes. Uh, Yeah. Everybody, I, we've talked about it a lot. Amazon Time is expected for everything now. Yeah, and now it's even hitting Amazon. Yes. A lot of times you'll see your Prime thing. Uh, if you don't need it for a couple of days, click this button. We'll give you nothing for doing this, but just click the button. Honestly, um, do your holiday shopping now. <laughs> but that's what they want you to think. This was my theory, Rich, of yes. the... People are are going on to the bandwagon of, oh, there's scarcity, there's terrible things. Do all your shopping right now. And then they hope you buy even more things later. So, you know, I, I'm maybe I'm being jaded, but I think some of this is uh, the secret marketer in the back going, hey, let's get ahead of this. So we'll have to see. But pent up demand, right? Yeah. You know, a lot of people, um, you know, find, you know, some items were extremely hard to find at the beginning of the pandemic, like toilet tissue, paper products, things like that. And then all of a sudden, now we're seeing issues in other types of products. Makes you think, just makes you think. 
And then finally, I think there's digital transformation. Things are changing. I mean, you know, technology doesn't stop. You've got AI, you've got robots, you've got electric vehicles, on-demand delivery. Lots of things are changing and they were accelerated because of the pandemic. And you're starting to see the effects of this digital transformation on the entire supply chain. Exactly. Definitely. So the second area that we want to talk to you about is a uh, second thing you need to do is get real about demand, inventory, and sell-through. And these are just basic business measures that you should be looking at. Even if you're a service-oriented uh, business, you have to look at your inventory, your demand, and sell-through. Uh, there's a, a tool, it's called the inventory sell-through rate, which is uh, a percentage. It's a measure that equals the number of units sold divided by the number of units received times 100, okay? So mm -hmm. you get a measure out of that to see what your sell-through, inventory sell-through rate is. Right. And that's something that you've got to have that number on all your products all the time because that's going to be your benefit, the staying ahead of it, making sure that you've got what you need, all that type of stuff. That number is so important. Um, but it also, you know, it predicts how quickly you're going to sell a product and convert your initial investment into a revenue. So, you know, some of the people will say things like, ah, nah, we don't need the foam right now. It's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll be okay. No, it's not going to be okay. Not going to be okay. <laughs> That's key. You're absolutely right. It's, it, because you really, you don't want products sitting on the shelf. You want to convert your investment, the money that you spent into money in your pocket as fast as possible. So a good sell-through rate is about 80% and above. So on your products, if you run this measure, if you have an 80% and above, you're doing fine. Now, if you're below 40%, that's concerning. And that's where you need to start looking at these products and services you provide is it really worth it? Yeah. And, you know, it really illustrates how well your inventory is managed. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at that and you say to yourself, holy cow, stuff's on shelf, you know, and you realize, oh, we've got a kink in the works here. You know, we've been, um, you know, we're not working as just in time as we could. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's so many different solutions that you can, you know, use. Yeah, like one of them is sell products in bundles. Bundle a uh, a low sell-through rate product with a high sell-through rate product. So you get it off the shelves and you get the money in your pocket. You know, bundle yeah. different things like and, Happy Meals. Exactly. <laughs> um, and the discounts and free shipping, just move it. Move it. You know, I had an interesting discussion with someone who was like, oh, I don't like to use credit cards. I like... I like everything, you know, they, I wanted them to give me a check. I'm like, stop it. Stop talking right now. This conversation is costing me money. I want you to offer discounts. I want you to offer free shipping. I want to, I want you to get the stuff out of here. And she's like, it's okay. You know, I just, uh, no, no, it's not okay. Yeah. You got, your, your entire job is to get it off the shelf. So any little thing that you could do, a giveaway, a social campaign, something like that, do it. And then there's upselling and cross-selling. Again, mm -hmm. it's figuring out how to upsell your customers on some of these lower inventory sell-through rates. Um, yeah. And, uh, get a better, a better understanding and maybe cross-sell across things. Exactly. And, you know, and, and say things to people like, you've seen it on other sites. You know, if you bought this, you'd like to consider this. You know, it's just a great way to kind of get the person to understand you have a lot larger capacity and products that might be perfect for them. Yeah. Um, the the third thing I wanted to bring up was diversity of your sourcing avenues. Um, we've gotten complacent. And prior to the, the, you know, pandemic, you know, we were all doing pretty darn good. We We kind of got sloppy. And one of the biggest issues out there is our dependence on cheap um, Chinese labor. Yes, I did agree with you, Rich. <laughs> you know, the products that need 
there's a lot of products that people feel they need to get from China. What you actually are doing is you want to get them from China because they're less expensive. And what you actually need to do is find American solutions. You know, things that it's a great opportunity to look at your fellow entrepreneurs and say, hey, who could help me with yeah. these various items? So it is a bit of a, a paradigm shift for you, but you do need to consider it. Yeah. The second area is loyalty. Um, uh, when you ask people to out, to diversify your sourcing avenues, Loyalty is huge. It, you know, uh, well, I've always worked with Steve. I always got these things. And it's yeah. only as good as they can get your product that you need. If the yeah. vendor cannot get you the product, you need to go to someone else. You just can't sit on your hands and go, oh, well, we just would sell that product. Right. You know, so many people say I'm loyal to my vendor. And, you know, but you're really all the only person you're cutting is that off of the knees is yourself. You know, yeah. you don't need one source, one vendor. You need to go back to the old three bid process. Make sure that you have multiple vendors who could you could literally pick up the phone, grab what you need, and and be successful. It's your business is much more important than you know the loyalty to a single vendor. So that's going to be a big homework assignment for everybody out there. <laughs> Yeah, so many, and like you said, the three bid process is huge. Is constantly have backup vendors for other things, uh, because the, if if the vendor you're ordering from, I could get that for you in about four weeks. You go, wow, what's it? Oh well, supply chain issues, blah blah. Just yeah, go, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna need to go to someone else. And sometimes when vendors hear that. They're using, and this is a big one, they're using uh, excuses to yeah. provide bad service. So, yeah. so okay, I'm, I might have to go to another vendor. And they go, well, let me check. Oh, I could get it to you next week. And suddenly you're like, well, what happened here? And yeah, yeah. But they see you leaving, suddenly things happen. <laughs> exactly. Well, it might force them to go to a different vendor to get that product for you. And it keeps going up the chain. If more people were, I use the word fickle with their vendors, this might, a lot of this stuff might go away because I have to go to someone else. Our, yeah. The fourth thing you need to do is, and this is a big one that BJ and I really focused in on, make fact-based decisions. This yeah. is huge. Do not make fear-based reactions. Don't be re reactive, be proactive. Exactly. You know, pessimists, you know, when you think about it, people are, uh, oh, no, I can't get it. You know, shop, you know, they're being explained, you know, shop early for Christmas. You, we're going to run out of all everything. And I'm going, yeah, you know what? No, they're not. They're not going to run out of everything. Just look at what you need. Be realistic. And it's going to happen. Yeah. So, yeah, lots of that stuff going on. Uh, pessimism also can affect your thinking. A lot of people are very left and right thinking about their business and they need to stop it. It's because they bring that pessimism into how they run their business. And I have to tell them, no, you have to be an equal opportunity offender. Stop worrying about that stuff. Just get it done. Figure yeah. out. Too many, and, you know, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Too, too many people are just complaining about their situation and not for nothing. The customers don't care. Yeah. You know, I was explaining to Rich a comment about I wanted to get white sweatshirts for another client. And um, I called up my usual vendor and she, I'm so busy. I can't possibly do it. Oh, I can't do it. I can't find them. And I called up another vendor that um, we just love in the off chance that he has white sweatshirts. And he went, oh, yeah, I have all the different sizes. What do you need? Boom. He got the business. She was doing it just because she wanted to tell me how, quote, busy she is. She lost the sale. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, her henny penny kind of, the sky is falling. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. 
And this happened a lot during the start of the pandemic, where many companies decided to throw in the towel during the pandemic and go out of business. And, yeah. you know, that's yeah. making fear-based reactions. A lot of companies sat back and go, okay, this is going to be hard, but we can get through it. What do we need to do to get through this? And you know? didn't we see, we saw some really cool companies who said opportunity. Yeah. They immediately said opportunity. And when that happens, oop, they're the ones who basically are grabbing all the business, and, which and is getting, so awesome. And talking about like the uh, your vendors and stuff, the smart people called their vendors and made sure that they were going to be there for them to say, yeah. look, I'm going to I'm going to go into overdrive. I'm going to need more product, whether it's a restaurant or whatever. I'm going to need more product. I need you to be there. Will you be there for me? Yes. Great. Yeah. And I'm telling you, those are the people who are still in business today who are doing phenomenal. So it's all definitely a, a big relationship, right? It's a big relationship issue. Um, we've got a great book that really will kind of bring this home to everybody. It's called The Supply Chain Revolution, Innovative Sourcing and Logistics of a Fiercely Competitive World. I, I think this is a book that everybody should pick up and you'll get a lot of great nuggets out of it. Um, it was written by Suman um, Sarkar, a neat, you know, very, very knowledgeable person. And I think it's a good book. Yeah, it's great. It provides uh, business leaders the secrets to succeeding in a disruptive world. It actually was written before the pandemic, but it has great Topics on how to make your alliances more successful, how to simplify and de-bottleneck your supply chain. Yeah, it's just like, you know, boost your retail success by managing store investment. It's just got a lot of great uh, pieces in there that could really help you, um, whether, you know, a pandemic or a regular business chain. <laughs> yeah, more businesses fail because... They're old school views towards cutting costs, and they usually begin with the supply chain. So yes, so um, that's about it for today. One of our spent our sponsors is Rich G, a high performance coach. Does your business model need a little zhuzh to accelerate and pass your competition? If you're revving up and preparing for a powerful 2022, you need to put Rich G on speed dial to take advantage of all the insight and techniques that he has to offer. Go to richg.com to chat with Rich today. And our other sponsor is BJ Flag. Now is the time to plan for the new year. Dust off your brand strategy and make an impactful plan for 2022. Look no further. I have someone in my community you want to talk to, BJ Flag from New Renew Brand Marketing. They are a full-service agency who can work on strategy, messaging, branding, to implementation, websites, PR, social media, email marketing. They're the group for you. That's N-U-R-E-N-U dot -E Thank you to our producer and king of creative, Richard Scalzo, bringing you the best small business podcast every Tuesday. Have an unbelievable week. Catch you later. <laughs>